Welcome to the Omnitalk Spotlight Series, the series where we highlight the people, the technologies, and the companies that are shaping the future of retail. Today, we are joined by Kristen Sevilla, CEO of Jewel. Kristen, welcome to the show. Oh, Chris, thanks so much for having me. Very excited to be here. Yeah, Ann and I as well. Like, so I got to tell this. I got to tell a quick story to all the listeners before we get started here. So, I would say about, gosh, Ann, when was it? Like, it was probably what June, July, maybe. We were doing some some different webinars amid the pandemic. Yep. Yeah, we were doing. Um, a, it was around Fashion Week, and we were kind of yeah. talking about what was going to happen you know, in this new world of fashion shows moving virtually, and then really started to talk to some of the buyers at, um, you know, individual boutiques and clothing stores who were having to do buying for the first time virtually and kind of putting it all out there, trying to see what people were going to be buying and how they could select those kind of key items uh, for this fall. And Jork came up time and time again. So we were really excited to get you on the show today, Kristen. Oh, that's great. You have no idea how that warms my heart. We've been beating this <laughs> digital transformation drum for 10 years at your. So to hear that folks just, you know, we came up from word of mouth marketing is incredible. So thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah, it was total karma because like these people kept saying over and over again, they say like, hey, we keep using this platform to help us during this time. And and I had known that I had seen you from just some of the activity on LinkedIn and, and some of the, some of the kind of reshares and whatnot you've done on of our content. So thanks for that too, right back at you. And so I was like, I got to, we got to reach out to her and see if she wants to come on the program and make sure everyone knows about this to the fullest extent possible. So, well, let's start with the obvious question then. Let's talk a little bit about what is Jor? Like, how does it work? Uh, how did yeah. it come to be? Yeah. So Jor is smooth, smart wholesale for brands and retailers. Um, Good alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, that's my sound bite. <laughs> our, our mission is uh, we are leading the digital transformation of the wholesale process, both buying and selling. And when you think about this industry, um, there's been so much focus and attention on the consumer side, as there should be. The customer obviously matters and comes first. But you think about what we've done there. We have you know, personalization on our, everyone has an e-commerce site. We have personalization, we have drop shipping, you name it, we have magic mirrors. I mean, we've done so much for that side of the business, yet the majority of the industry at the moment that they're making decisions of what they should put on their selling floor or what they should put on their website are predominantly using PowerPoint and Excel spreadsheets. So that is really the target moment that Jor is transforming. That decision that you make of what you should buy or what you should sell so that you get it right before it hits the floor, not when, not when it's too late. Yeah, and get into the details too of the specifics of exactly what does that mean? So like if I'm, I'm, I'm jo Joe Joanne Buyer at Name Your Retailer, like how am I, how am I using exactly what you're yeah, describing? Yeah, we actually have three products. So the okay. first product is the brand platform and that digitizes brands. So instead of using paper line sheets, and having your showroom be completely done physical with no digital presence at all, or in this era, you can't do a showroom. Right. We provide a virtual version of that showroom entirely. We really replicate but enhance that showroom experience to be digital. So as the brand, you welcome in buyers. Buyers are always free. They can log in and they can see a digital experience of what you want them to see. But the magic here is the ability to personalize that showroom based on who's logging in. So you for sure would wanna show maybe shop up a much larger, broader, different assortment than you would show a small boutique from downtown New York somewhere, right? right. And that's the real magic here. The login drives the experience. Interesting. And that from back from my buying days, that's a lot easier than having to pivot my showroom or whatnot for whatever clients coming into town that given day or however I've coordinated exactly. this you event, right? Pivot your showroom. <laughs> that's really a lot less exciting. lifting, yeah. literally. Right. right. What are and the then, other products? Yeah. So on the re we have a retail product. So okay. in general, retailers can log into those showrooms for free and you can see every showroom that you're meant to see and you can do your buying that way. Okay. But the upgrade we made, and as a former buyer, you're gonna relate, I'm a former buyer as well. We made it into an assortment planning tool on the retail side. So when you go to each showroom, oh. you're able to pull in the data to your viewpoint where what you see is everything. So you're able to say, how many white t-shirts did I just buy? And you can actually see cross-brand 
what you're mm -hmm. buying before you actually make the buys, the assortment planning piece of it. So that is something you do pay for on Shore as an upgrade. And right now we have about, about 30 retailers that have done that product, that do their product with us. Okay, fast. I want to make sure I understand that. So basically, as I'm constructing my line, let's use your white t-shirt example. I can see like what the white t-shirt characteristics and costs are at one safe vendor versus another vendor and then decide within the whole portfolio of what I'm looking at, the black, the red, the green t-shirts as well, how that all mixes out. Correct. And you could take it down to the store level and actually do your uh, you know, A stores, B stores, C stores, you can actually figure out the buys much, much more upstream. And by having both sides digital, as you can imagine, what we shorten is that cycle of decision making. Hmm. Right after the appointment, the brand has a really good idea what the buyer is going to buy and the buyer walks away with images, details. And because it's a platform, though on day one, it's not going to be uh, rich in information, but by day five, it will be. So it's a platform whereby as the brands upgrade each style, the UPC, the actual cost, the fabrication, the country of origin, all those things that you need as a retailer to get this live to site or to put into your systems, you iteratively get that on the platform as the brand updates their ERP system. So it's also a data exchange that keeps both parties real time. Yeah, that's, God, that's fascinating because you're kind of almost flipping the script in a way, like in terms of how this works. I mean, I can remember back in the buying days, it would be like, you talked about assorting the stores, A, B, C, it'd be, what is this going to look like? You know, how am I going to high level kind of assort this portfolio? What's it going to lay out and look like? Now you're saying I can grab all these things digitally, start to plug and play them into, start to look at the financials of how that all rolls up. But then ultimately, I am, I'm curious about this too. And I haven't talked to you about this, but I'm curious as you're flipping the script. Does that then enable me to say, okay, now I really want to know what I want to see. I don't need to see everything like I always used to, but now like send me the stuff or let me physically and tangibly understand what some of these things are yeah. later in the process and more yeah, efficient. The actual, yeah, the actual editing is, and then we have a product called the edit embedded within this. It's like a, one of our functions is okay. called the edit. And that's exactly what this is about. First of all, as a buyer, you do get to pre-see things before you go to a market or to a trade show or wherever you're taking. Jor is mobile, right? It's desktop, but it's also iPad and iPhone based, right? So wherever Sweet. you're going, you take Jor with you. Mm -hmm. You can pre-see collections before you walk into a showroom. So I know when I was a buyer, I wish I had that. So I remember painfully sitting through sometimes and saying, "That is, I was at Macy's. That is not for Macy's, move on. That is not for Macy's, move on. Whereas now you can walk in and say, look, the green line, the green collection, the home whatever collection make a lot of sense for me. Let's focus and spend our time there. So, and that's if you're going to the showroom. If you're not going to the showroom, like in this era, right. you can do that yourself, right? You can go to this screen and see it all and you can instantly just jump to the collections that you know are for you. So you're controlling it, whether it's physical or omni-channel as they say, or or completely virtual. That's funny. That brings me back to the days where you'd walk the showroom and, and you know you just gave the vendor the time to say, yeah, okay, you can show me the new stuff, but there's right, there's exactly. just no way it's going to happen, no, right? Like, like, no. <laughs> you can show me dog beds, but like you sell dining chairs. I don't I don't need to see that stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. Okay, got it, got it. Um, so what led you to it? Like, how did you, like, what, you know, like, what drew you to join it? I think you said four years ago um, yeah. before we started. Yeah, like, I what, would, what captivated um, you? Yeah, what captivated me. I was actually at the time the president of The Knot, which is a wedding planning site. And just briefly there, what we did there was we led the digital transformation of the wedding planning process. So we took that process of getting married and turned it into, uh, sorry, not getting married, of, plan of planning your wedding <laughs> <laughs> and, and turned it into a digital experience, which brought data upstream to both parties, both couples and venues, and made for better matching. I was approached by the board of directors of JOR probably four and a half years ago for this opportunity. And I had been, you know, thinking it was interesting. I was a former buyer at Macy's. I started my career there. And when I took a, got a demo of the product, I just couldn't believe that everyone wasn't using it. It was one of those moments of, why is this company so small? Why isn't everybody using this? This is a fantastic idea. And I believe this can be a billion dollar company. That was sort of like what was in my mindset. 
I then went to the industry, my friends who were still at Macy's and Target and all the different locations and said, hey, how do you guys buy today? And was stunned to hear that they bought the exact same way I bought in the late 90s. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it, I mean, no difference. Oh, we use Excel and right. we have these line sheets. So the opportunity was just enormous. I was excited by the idea. And quite frankly, it was me moving from a president to the CEO position. So for, you know, for personally, it was a great move for me. And what better first CEO job than an industry you already know? Like, you don't have to learn the industry. How great is that? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what drove me here, and it's, uh, it has been very fulfilling to be here for sure, as we have been beating this drum for digital transformation. Kristen, what, I'm curious what existed in the, the JOR platform kind of pre-pandemic and what refinements you've made throughout the course of the last six to nine months? Because I imagine, I mean, the tools already sound like they're saving tons of time for people, but were there any other things that you had to just kind of tweak or update or even new products that you had to add in order to accommodate this like new buying world in, in a pandemic? Yes, an, overwhel an overwhelming yes. And let, let me tell the story here. Um, Pre-pandemic, JOR had always had a virtual showroom, but nobody was using it. The real use case for JOR was the iPads and iPhones at showrooms and at events. And we ran a very good business that way. It was still, it's still worthwhile to do that. Digitization in the moment, as opposed to writing things down, still closed the gap, time to site was faster. It, it works very effectively as an omni-channel tool. I don't wanna you know, not underlie that, it's, it's, it's important. What happened was, that went away, right? So the story here was it was February and the same time you were hearing from all the different fashion weeks about Jor was the same time that we were seeing that fashion weeks were not happening. They were going completely digital. I called a meeting in February with my leadership team and I said to them, you know, we have this product, this thing called Jor Passport which at the time was just an app. And it was an app that you could mm -hmm. take to trade shows that the SMBs, the smaller businesses, could do their buying on the phone and, and have that record of the stuff that they liked at each booth. I told the team to take everybody off of our mobile devices and that we needed to come up with a product that could actually support and power fashion weeks and trade shows because by June, there was going to be no physical events. That's exactly what we did. We took all of our resources. We launched Jora Passport. We powered 17 events um, starting in June with London Fashion Week. Um, we powered Cabana in the United States. We powered Liberty Men, Splash Paris. We did some work with New York Fashion Week. Um, and then it also enabled us to get global. We did an event in um, Turkey, <laughs> Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week Istanbul. We did an event in Colombia, Bogota Fashion Week. So all in 17 events. Um, and you know, we were how business continuity happened. We ended up having 136,000 retailers log in and come to these events. They purchased 440,000 items from 128 countries. And you know what people realized was, this is so successful that it needs to stay as a component. Like we as trade shows, they've all renewed with me, not, not mm. just for half a year, but for mm -hmm. all of next year, where the first half of this upcoming 2021 will be digital, virtual again, but come back half, we'll go back to having and keeping that virtual presence and having the iPhone and the iPads work at the events themselves to keep that digital thing. But it, it was you know, transformative. The, the, the second thing we did was just focusing on the virtual showroom itself and training brands like, hey, we already have this virtual showroom, you've never used it. We put a lot into showing them that, but we did a bunch of enhancements. The first was, we were the first to do 360 imaging embedded. Okay. So we did a partnership. Um, with a company called Ordra Orb360 um, Imaging. And by March, as a brand, you were able to put full spin images into the platform. Um, and the second thing we added was um, video by style, okay. which allowed you to, um, to see the movement of garment. And then the third was the edit, which was the feature I was telling you about a few minutes ago that allows you to actually edit the assortment down via a style board function 
where you can, uh, it's the equivalent, Chris, of when you were in the showroom sitting at the table and determining the final assortment. Yeah, right. Right, right. Yeah, right. We replicated that. Kristen, does all that, that's, some of that stuff's fascinating at the end too. Like, does that all help say the people making the decisions too, in terms of understanding, you know, which of these vendors are equipped for e-commerce as well? Like when you start talking about who has 360 degree images, who has videos that complement what they're doing, I have to imagine that's a good proof point that you also can't see when you're just looking at a showroom floor, say traditionally. Is that true? Am I thinking about that the right way? You can't see it. And, And one of the great things here is that in this way, Jor becomes a content management or content enablement platform as well. So we Jesus. do, with the brand's permission, we do allow this stuff to be pulled to the retailer and the brand owns control of that. So you're also limiting the amount of photography that needs to get done, right? So if the 360 imaging is being shot, imagine how much Target would love this as an example, right? Right, right. So yeah. Imaging. So our mission here is to get as many brands as possible to recognize the value of shooting this imagery, A, for yourself in the B2B world, but I would even say more importantly, for the uh, transfer to the B2C world and for that, again, time to site. So there are retailers on Jor today right. that deals with brands to take that content. So the copy, the uh, everything they need and to of course they always edit it because that's what they you know they want to put it in their voice yeah. but having a, a content management system like Jor in between is it's another use case that's been pretty magical during all of this well yeah and then you get into like the whole jesus there's so many offshoots of this then you get into the assorted planning side of things too where yeah if you can get speed to market faster on e-commerce you could start taking pre-orders you could start to kind of see how the markets respond to things before they start to arrive in your store, see if you need to shift buys. I mean, I'm, I might be getting crazy with this, but that seems no, that's like that's exactly all attainable that's stuff. That's exactly right? what, we, what we do, exactly what we're doing, exactly. Yep. Interesting, wow, okay, well, where does it go next? What are you thinking for, uh, What that? that's a lot in one year. What's going on for 20 It really accelerated it, so it's been exciting. Um, you know, we're, we're continuing our mission. We wanna digitize everybody. We have this uh, saying that we want no brand or retailer left behind. Um, so we, st- we do continue to work with all retailers and brands to even get to this digital point, but by always adding newness. So our next step that we're focused on is um, actually having transactions on the platform to allow for quicker buys. So right now in our industry, the way it works is people write orders and then they go offline and they don't even, most of them don't even, the small businesses don't even really have systems. If somebody calls up right. and sends an invoice and says, pay us, pay us, pay us. So we launched a transaction vehicle. Timing wasn't great. We launched a transaction vehicle in January of this past year um, that we paused intentionally, although we still had 120 brands sign on to it. Um, we're going to revisit that going into 2021 now that transactions are happening again. But what this has done is it allows you in platform to send those invoices and to track progress. And for the 120 brands that did uptake that this past year, um, they saw their payments or getting paid go from three and a half months delay to three and a half days. So it's, it's, it's enabling folks to get paid, which they need in this environment more quickly. And it puts it in a trackable platform. It doesn't require phone calls and people to track down money. Yeah, that's interesting. Cause especially for Anna and I too, I mean, as, as a small business that actually just launched our own e-commerce site, I was starting to think about that in terms of like, okay, what are the dynamics of how this, how this is used? As you look at the different products that are available out in the marketplace, you know, can I see what's available for, you know, you know, consignment selling versus full inventory buy, can I coordinate and do all of that in the platform? It sounds like, yeah, all of that is for sure coming. Right, right. That's very cool. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stay close to this one. So I love doing this program. It's I, we got great advice, go where you're interested, and you'll always be interested. And that's how this podcast started. And right. that's where it's going to continue to go uh, for us as well. All right, well, we've got to get you out of here on this. We do it with everybody. How millennial are you? Are you ready? <laughs> I am ready, Chris. All right. We will not ask you, when was the last time you programmed a VCR? So okay. And right. it should be, how Gen X are you? <laughs> That's right. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Kristen, uh, when you are at a grocery store, 
you're pulling in a, in a normal world, we'll say, um, and you're pulling out payment, what are you using? Is it cash, a credit card, or a mobile app or mobile payment of some kind? First of all, am I going to the grocery store? Because I think often I'm actually ordering in, <laughs> ordering from the grocery store. The grocery store is delivering to me. But when I do go, it's Apple Pay. Nice. All right. That's, that's like a twofer. I mean, that's Ooh. order online and mobile payment. <laughs> Kristen, you you might you might just win in the first question. There we'll, you go. We'll, we'll go to the next, <laughs> well, next I gotta, one though. Well, I'd say too, just so Kristen knows, I mean, we've done 100, 150 of these and like that is in the minority of the answer. Most people really? are I find it so pay. easy. Yeah, I would say it's like 20%. We've got some people who are like the most you know, like crazy, innovative, like startup things. And they're like, yeah, I still pull out my credit card. It's pretty crazy. Oh, wow. yeah. No, Apple Pay. I, I feel like I'm female tech company. I'm going to be on top of the tech, I hope. Con That's great. I do. Love it. All right. Next question is, how many times in the last week have you ordered food or drinks from a, an app? Uh, this week, it's been twice. Okay. Only and it, that is that grocery too, or just uh, not including grocery? Gro gro I would okay. be more often if I include grocery. We ordered out uh, twice this week from an app, Uber okay. Eats, or one of you know, their okay. DoorDash, whoever has the best deal going. <laughs> right. <What's laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I know it feels like price, it's just, basically yeah right. exactly what offers out there. It seems like they're all throwing them out. We, there we follow days. the offers. It's funny. Yes. That way, right. Yeah, yes. I can't wait for this next one. <laughs> All right. Last question. If you could only use one social app, which one would it be and why? Oh, that's a good one. Um, you know, I'm going to say LinkedIn is probably the one I, I used to use Facebook more, but I find LinkedIn just, at least it's enriching my mind. Right. Um, and Facebook got a little bit too political for me during the whole divisiveness of our of our nation so um linkedin is probably where i would stick with we hear that from ceos a lot is it is it the connections for the industry is it news like how, how are you i use it, it for news like following you guys i use it yeah. for i find it more useful than a lot of other ways to get news and information i follow the people i want to follow so you're self-curating mm -hmm. and i think i feel like it's where a lot of the news breaks and 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 then the person putting the news, if you want to connect with them, you can do that too. Like, how great is that? You can do it all. Right, you can talk to them. Yeah, and it's not as sensational either. I feel like there's not as much sensational news out there too. Like, it's especially if you're following the people you want in terms of, you know, the types of opinions you're going to get. That's interesting. We've never heard that before. Uh, we get that a lot from people in your position. We usually hear like Twitter or right. LinkedIn for that. Um, so that's, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, hey, that was a ton of fun. I love so that. Fun. I love it. We may have to do this again because I have a feeling. Uh, I, this is, this is a really cool concept and I can't wait to continue to watch this. I know Ann and I are super excited about it. So, Hey, if people want to get in touch with you, if they want to learn more about your, where should they go? What should they do? Yeah. So get in touch with me, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. As I just told you, I'm on there often so I'd <laughs> love to meet people. Um, and then for the company, you know, jor.com would be a great place to go. So we can learn more about Jor and we can get you connected with folks that can show you the product. Awesome. Awesome. Well, again, everyone, that was Kristen Sevilla, CEO of Jure. To everyone listening out there, thank you for tuning in. And of course, be careful out there.